Hello everybody, Mr. O here. And what does Mr. O do when he's in a drawing funk? Well, he answers questions. Um, I find that at least I'm doing art and gets me over uh, artist block, drawing block, uh, just out of my funk sometimes. So, um, hey, you know, guys, making videos for yourselves might help you do that too. No matter how frustrated you get, you get, you just keep pushing forward. I've I've been very frustrated this week because I'm I'm supposed to do an eye video. I'm supposed to do some hands. You guys are dying for the hand videos. I'm going to talk about ink pens and what the numbers mean. Obviously, uh, let's just talk a little bit about the different ink pens. Um, Copics, of course, is one of the top brands, followed by Fibercastle. Uh, we have Prismacolor. We have Stedler. And an uh, ink pen set that somebody picked up um, from Five Below. If you have a Five Below, uh, this is basically... It's a very large set for $4. Now, I will tell you, when it comes to ink pens, the cheaper you go, you get the value out of that. Meaning, uh, there's a reason why professional and, str and striving artists go with the top brands, and that is because of the ink quality. The lesser the quality you have, the more likely it's not going to be a true black and the more likely it's going to fade quicker over time. And when I say quicker over time, I mean within a year. And if you're somebody who's becoming a professional artist doing works for some of the big companies right now and you're using cheap pens, I might suggest that you uh, invest yourself into uh, uh, quality pens. And we are just talking about the one use pens and nibs. Um, I will do a separate video on dip pens and inking with brushes and stuff. But let's just talk about simply what are the numbers on uh, pens. And as I'm laying these out, you can see um, I arranged them so they go up. Here's the number. Microns by Sakura are, is the brand I prefer but I'm gonna probably move to the refillable Copics uh, pens. And I'm gonna talk ab about one of the biggest drawback with any of these pens and something we need to be more conscious of, and that is the one-use plastic. We can only recycle so far, and as artists, we go through, we probably do our part in wasting materials. We need to do our part to recycle and uh, try to figure out other ways of using our materials and not investing in the one use. And don't fault yourself. I have drawers and drawers of ink pens that I'm gonna use up first before I, um, um, so I'm not trying to come across as judgmental. You do you. And simply put, the number is referring to the nib. And as you can see that, I'm gonna go on the paper so you can see like a, 005 is very small and thin, where uh, 8, you can really see that nice and thick. Now, there are 1s, but I want you to look at the nib on a 1. It's more in between a pen and a brush tip. And you go, what's a brush tip? Well, the brush pens are very handy. And I'm going to tell you something about the, the Micron uh, brush pens. I have terrible luck with those. I actually end up using more of the Prismacolor brush pens um, because for some reason the Microns, I always split them. And maybe that's just me. Maybe something I'm doing wrong that's more sensitive with the Micron. Now, um, number five pen, that would be more like if you have a Sharpie fi uh, ultra fine point um, or this Sharpie pen, as you can see, most of these type pens with these nibs are pretty much a five. So if you've been inking with just a regular pen, Sharpie pen, uh, you're closer to a, a five. Uh, and as you go down lower, you, you can probably figure out this is for your detailing. Now, why do you have so many choices in pen? Is it just about the details? No. Uh, we, we have something that some of you are aware of, some of you are not, and that's uh, line width. The pens are supposed to help you with line width. And of course, 
uh, the brush pen is supposed to help you with large areas. So let me just kind of show you the base. Here is the number five. And as you can see, this is basically, you know, the average that we use. But if I was outlining maybe an anime type character or comic book character on a large sheet of paper, I might actually outline it with this eight and use my five and lower numbers for detailing, you know, getting into the eye. And if I go down, you'll probably won't notice the difference until I hit the zero, zero, five. I want you to see how thin that is. And if I lessen my pressure, I can get it even thinner. And see, this is where the advantage of having dip pens, and I'll talk about that. But having the smaller sizes, that gets into, if, if you're into American comic book art, like Todd McFarlane or even Rob Liefeld, they do a very good job of just the tiniest inking details and the people they hire for their inking um, do an incredible job. Or if you do a large area, see how nice the brush pen is, and, and see how nice and dark uh, the Secure is. And I can put the others next to it. Um, see, this is the one, and this is nice for drawing. Um, and But it's, it's not giving me much of a difference than the eight unless I push down hard on it. And I, I've always been reluctant to do that. So I very rarely use the one. Um, I'm going to take the $4 set brush pen. And as you can see, it matches pretty good. But notice something. It, while it seems darker... And this is more like what I would get out of a Sharpie on this side. Over time, this will kind of have a yellowish brown tint. Um, I think if you've seen that in ink pictures, you'll understand what I'm talking about. That the lines become faded from just basic lights in, in the house, whatever. And it takes away from your beautiful art. So ink pens are unlike maybe those alcohol base where you can buy a hoo-hoo's and get some amazing quality that doesn't fade over time for a cheaper price, ink pens is the one thing I would suggest you don't go uh, cheaper. Um, I'm not gonna do a product review, even though I own these. Um, not all of them I've used yet. Uh, like I said, I prefer the Microns. I have used the Fiber Castles and I like them very much. And for fun, I even fill it in with uh, the gray set. Um, as you can see, you can create a, uh, more shadows and stuff. And they're all a brush. And they are different sizes for brushes. There is a, a, a small brush and a, a regular medium size brush. And uh, so guys, I hope that answers. Like I said, when it comes to sizes, it's talking about the nib. And you want to give yourself a variety. I would recommend, you know, you do get yourself a .005. The average is five, but having a three and an eight will help you with line width. I will do an inking video that just covers the basics of explaining what uh, line width means, uh, line weight. Um, I'm using line width, but I mean line weight. Um, and you, you guys can, uh, just, you know, take that ne next step in your inking ability. You guys have a, wait, oh, I almost forgot. I told you, Mr. O's not all with it today. But, and a hard jump to a white piece of paper. As I said at the beginning of the video, I am in a funk. And I'm struggling here, and I had to cut it because I didn't write this correctly because I forgot the important word of not. You're not alone. And I know uh, if you're watching this um, and by yourself, sometimes you feel that way, but you're not. We, we all go through our uh, struggles and, and bits of loneliness, but we're all here for each other. You guys have a great day and I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.